Uh, you see, neutral stars were on theoretical objects were quite some time. Actually, many of these, uh, as I said, even supernova theories were like that. But in 1967, a student called Jocelyn Bell, she found a very interesting sort of what you call a chart recorder. Chart recorder is uh, something you might have seen, uh, for example, AC voltage or something like that. But now you look at again the left uh, bottom here, and you see kind of a uh, kind of pulses there. And what she found was they were very equally placed, uh, equally spaced, extremely, uh, say, you know, this exactly same period. And uh, so this is what's called a pulsar. This is the first, actually, this is the record of the first pulsar, and it's a kind of a historical uh, document there. And uh, they, of course, there are theories, a lot of times the theories are there for pulsars, as you probably know. Uh, but finally, what stays today is pulsars are neutral stars, but they're rotating. And the typical analogy given in these things uh, is like a beam from a lighthouse, I know. Uh, that's what we see. And uh, it's a beam from a lighthouse which is uh, going very fast. And uh, we'll see some of those objects uh, 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 in the next one or two slides. And uh, pulsars are very interesting by itself. Now, we said we talked about supernovae and we talked about pulsars. These are all very connected objects. Now, uh, you please see the right uh, top. Uh, this is the again crab, you know, we mentioned crab many times. And uh, this is when the crab pulsar is on, the, uh, that the, the right is when the crab pulsar is off. So the difference between that each one is 33 milliseconds, milliseconds is 1,000 of a second. And uh, so uh, this is, uh, uh, of course, at that time that was the fastest object known. Now we know many fast objects, uh, in the, uh, like even a millisecond, we call it millisecond pulsars we have. Uh, the crab is, uh, this is very clear there that it is on and off type of an object. And uh, here is quantitatively, it is what, you call, what we call light curves here, let me just write a technical thing. And what we show here is what's called a phase, which goes between 0 and 1, that means like one, one turn indicates 1 there, half a turn is 0.5, like let us say, uh, like uh, throughout the sun, like one year would be 1 there, half a year would be 0.5. Now, I just want you to just again stop, look at the crab pulsar there. You see the radio, optical, the x ray, and the gamma ray. And we have some more, but uh, we do not plot it there. And th this is what is very special about this object. It's a supernova, as you know. Now, by the way, now you know that. And it gives all types of, all types of light. You know, whole electromagnetic spectrum, one particular object is creating to you all these things. And so these are, there are several other pulsars. I won't go into that. All right, now I will skip this slide because people are very familiar with black holes. Now these are the three objects, the white dwarfs, the neutral stars, and the black holes, and all these are uh, high energy emitters. And now let me shift to some uh, 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 another uh, very interesting celestial object, what we call quasars. Now you see on the left uh, here, it's a time magazine, as you all know, time is a uh, very famous news magazine in America. And this is the only time I think I could be wrong, but I think I'm, uh, an astronomer up here. I forget Einstein, Einstein appears many times in these things. And uh, first time he appeared on a, uh, the front page. Now, what is it that made one like this person called Martin Schmidt? And what is that one? He, what he found was you just see now the right hand part of the uh, right below. This is what's called a spectrum. Uh, this is a hydrogen spectrum. And hydrogen, as you know, is the basic uh, nucleus, a proton and an electron going around. And uh, this is the hydrogen spectrum, what we call H alpha, beta, etc. lights. Now, this uh, the x axis shows you the wavelength, and then the, the uh, with the y shows the intensity. Now, you must also see there a red uh, arrow there. What that it is indicating is actually the the left hand, left side of the arrow is where, if you had done the, done the hydrogen spectrum in the lab, that's where you would have seen the lights. So there's an enormous shift in these lights, and people did not understand what the shift was for quite some time. And then they found this is because of what's called Doppler effect, because the optic is going away. And uh, so this, uh, but people did not imagine that an object would give such high uh, shifts. And this is what we call today redshift uh, what, uh, and uh, things like that. Uh, so this is the this is again a very classic plot in astronomy, hydrogen spectrum from a quasar compared with that in the lab. And uh, it is also 
another uh, important aspect of this is it is not just far it is also very small you know like uh, like for example it just occupies the space of uh, let's say our solar uh, uh, system okay now uh, this is just on uh, the right hand side you can see the intensity from those objects of these objects called 31 or 3c279 it's very fast it's varying within a period of uh, one day or two days like that that means the object is just only that big so this is why uh, this uh, acting galactic nuclei that's what it is very highly luminous and uh, very far off and from a very small region so it makes it very very interesting for a uh, for an astronomer, especially for a high energy astronomer. And uh, this is a typical uh, cartoon from of a uh, uh, AGN or uh, Actigalactic Nuclei. What it did is, is what the interesting part is the, the central part of the uh, object here, you have what is called a supermassive black hole. That means uh, uh, like uh, about a million uh, solar masses or something like that. And there are two jets, jets of uh, Optical light could be there, gamma could be there, X-rays could be there, things like that, and it is shown in the right amount. So now, uh, by now, we are now familiar with uh, the three important uh, objects, as I said, supernovae, we, uh, neutron stars and pulsars, and AGNs, uh, quasars. Now, these are the objects which we will be uh, talking about in the uh, latter part of the lecture. And now, all right, we talked about sources, but then <laughs> how do these... Uh, objects make these very high energy particles okay now here this is a very uh, a very common very interesting phenomenon called synchrotron radiation now the name sounds very really big but you want all this happening really is that an electron is going in the magnetic field and depending on the energy of the electron it gives out light it gives out uh, it gives out uh, electromagnetic waves and if the, if the, uh, uh, if the energy is low the electromagnetic waves is essentially radio. Whereas if it's much, much higher, you would get X-rays also out of this thing. Incidentally, the most of the radio light, radio waves we see in the universe are because of uh, uh, synchrotron radiation. So this is a very important phenomenon, but certainly for radio, but even for higher energies, but we need much higher energy electrons for this. The next important uh, uh, thing, which is actually not very uh, this is photoelectric effect, what happens to photons, okay? And I'll skip this because this is slightly lower energy, think more important for X-rays. But what's more important for much higher energy is what we call Compton effect. Compton effect, it is what happens, See, this is a very famous scientist called Arthur Compton, who we have heard of. What he did was, he scattered X-rays of, uh, uh, from electrons, X-rays and electrons, you may essentially interact I found that the X-ray comes up with it, uh, which uh, uh, depends on the energies actually. We call it Compton effect or inverse Compton effect. And uh, these are processes which gives out either a high very higher energy electron or a higher energy photon. What is important for us today is what's called inverse Compton, opposite of this effect where a photon comes out with very high energy. But uh, to start with, it's a lower energy, but it kicks off on the electron uh, at a much higher energy. Pro kicks off on the and another important, uh, also I would like to say one more thing about Compton effect, which is very important. You see, people are debating whether, as I told you, the very first slide with the particles, of, there were the photons or waves and things like that. And it's Compton effect which really proved that at higher energies, photons, that light behaves like photons. And he has got the Nobel Prize, etc.